Hello dear friends. Today we want to present you a bit of the history of the island of Kefalonia and of course the present with all the most beautiful things to visit. We will start with the not very distant history of the island, namely with the Second World War. In the Second World War, the island was occupied by the Allied forces, namely Germany and Italy. At the end of 1943, the occupation force was predominantly Italian, the 33rd Acqui Infantry Division plus Marine personnel totaling 12,000 men, but there were also about 2,000 German soldiers present. After the fall of Mussolini's fascist regime, much confusion arose on the island as the Italians hoped to return home, but the German forces did not want the Italians' munitions to ultimately be used against them, for the same reason the Italian forces were reluctant and them to surrender their weapons. As German reinforcements moved towards the island, Italian soldiers concluded that they had to fight the Nazis, convinced that if they surrendered their weapons they would be killed or sent to the camps. The fighting reached a climax in Argostoli, where Italian military forces were continuously besieged by Nazi soldiers and who eventually won, taking full control of the island. About 5,000 of the 9,000 surviving Italian soldiers were executed in retaliation by German forces. While the war ended in Central Europe in 1945, Kefalonia remained in a state of conflict due to civil war. Peace returned to Greece and the island in 1949. The book Captain Corelli's Mandolin by Louis de Bernier's, after which the film of the same name was made in 2001, is based on this incident we have related, which took place during the Second World War, dressed up extraordinarily beautifully in a love story between an Italian officer and the daughter of a Greek doctor from Kefalonia. Kefalonia is the largest of the Ionian Islands, it encompasses a wide variety of landscapes and features, from picturesque beaches to mountains, castles and monasteries. To get to Kefalonia you need a plane or ferry ride, there are a number of possibilities, the most accessible is the route Basiliki Fiscardo, it can also be reached from Patras or Kalini. We chose the route departing from the island of Lefkada, from the port of Vasiliki to the port of Fiscardo in Kefalonia, the company that operates this route is called West Ferry. You cannot pay for a ticket online, but you can make a reservation. Fiscardo has been identified with the ancient city of Panormos, mentioned by the Greek historian Herodotus in the 5th century BC. During the French, Norman, rule in Greece, the village was renamed Fiscardo after Robertus Wiscardus, Duke of Apulia and Calabria and founder of the Kingdom of Sicily, who died on the beach of Athras in Kefalonia. Fiscardo is the northernmost port of Kefalonia, a short distance from Ithaca. It is a very beautiful village that is definitely worth visiting.
Athra's beach is located in Paliki, north of Liksuri. It is a sandy beach and is located in the center of a small, narrow bay that keeps the water calm. The water is shallow and clear, it is one of the favorite beaches for families with small children. Athra's beach is not organized, you have to bring everything you need. There is a traditional tavern with local cuisine and fresh fish. Ποιος έχει φιλιμένη και στα χιλίδα γομένη και στα χιλίδα γομένη ποιος έχει φιλιμένη ποιος ποιος θέλω να ξέρω ποιος Myrtos is undoubtedly one of the main attractions of Kefalonia. The beach is located 29 kilometers north of Argostoli, in a beautiful area around some mountains. Myrtos Beach has gained a worldwide reputation and has been consistently listed in travel magazines as one of the most beautiful and impressive beaches in the world. It has been awarded many times for its cleanliness and natural beauty. The beach is well organized, with umbrellas, sunbeds and a bar with a terrace, offering cold drinks and snacks. Most of the beach remains completely free. Parking is free and very close to the beach. The natural beauty of Myrtos Beach is the trademark of Kefalonia and one of the most photographed places in Greece. The earthquakes in Kefalonia were so devastating that they damaged or destroyed almost all villages in Kefalonia except the village of Fiscardo, which I presented earlier. One of the villages seriously affected by the earthquake was Vlahada. The village of Lahada was very badly affected by the devastating earthquake of 1953, 7.2 Richter, and its inhabitants numbering about 800, had to move, most of them moved to the village of Caravamolos. What remains of the village offers us a unique glimpse into the past. Facades of buildings, walls, streets, fountains, stone ovens, tools and objects left behind by the villagers, we can still find them among the trees and the greenery that has settled between the ruins. Another village in Kefalonia destroyed by the earthquake was Assos. Assos, this charming village, 
did not escape the destruction caused by the earthquake of 1953. After the earthquake, this village was rebuilt by the locals, being helped by donations from French tourists, most of them being Parisians. A walk through the narrow lanes reveals beautifully colored houses and many flowers. Small and secluded, the village of Assos has less than 100 permanent residents. It is located in a romantic setting, the locality being practically stormed by thousands of tourists during the summer season, attracted primarily by its natural charm and the beauty of the landscape. Chi Beach is one of the most famous beaches in Kefalonia characterized by the white rocky hills surrounding the beach and reddish-brown sand. The beach is quite well organized with straw umbrellas and sunbeds. Right on the beach is a nice bar serving cold drinks and snacks and a water sports center for the more adventurous. Shallow waters and gentle waves create the ideal environment for children. Around the area there are many taverns, small shops and hotels. The beach is easily accessible by car or public buses from Lixuri and Argostoli. Woody Beach, it is a small, exotic and quiet beach. It is located near the village of Zola and 25 kilometers from the city of Argostoli. Vudi is divided into two small beaches separated by cliffs. One is unfurnished and the other partially organized with a few umbrellas and sunbeds. The water has a turquoise color and is clear, so snorkeling is possible. The sun on this beach hides behind the mountain relatively early, around 6 p.m., so if you want to enjoy the sun, keep this in mind.
Antisamos Beach is probably one of the most favorable destinations for swimming and sunbathing in Kefalonia. It is located 30.6 kilometers east of Ardostoli and quite close to the port of Sami. Antisamos is distinguished by its natural beauty, which consists of turquoise waters and hills with lush vegetation. Antisamos Beach is awarded with the blue flag, being very well organized, with umbrellas, sunbeds, terraces and taverns. Among other facilities on the beach you can also find a center for renting water sports equipment. The sea water is so clear that you can see the shoals of fish, so very good for snorkeling. At 18 kilometers from Ardostoli and very close to the village of Zola, you will find the beach of Aegea Kuriaki. The beach is organized, here you can find sunbeds and umbrellas. On the beach there is a tavern where you can serve food and of course, a terrace with cold drinks. Also here, on the beach, you can also find a center for renting water sports equipment. Parking is close to the beach. The Dragarati Cave in Kefalonia is about 60 meters deep and has a constant temperature of 18 degrees. The humidity of the cave reaches 90%. The cave was discovered 300 years ago and opened to the public in 1963. It was discovered when a strong earthquake caused a collapse that exposed the cave entrance. Dragarati is an impressive cave with remarkable stalactite and stalagmite formations. Speleologists say that this cave is about 150 million years old and is a rare geological phenomenon. Scientists have discovered that the Dragarati cave has an extension that is not accessible and they believe that through this extension it is connected to other sea caves.
Catani is a magnificent beach located 35 kilometers west of Argostoli, the capital of Kefalonia, on the beautiful Paliki Peninsula. The landscape consists of crystal blue waters and huge rocks with lots of vegetation. The beach is organized you will find sunbeds and umbrellas, taverns and terraces. The parking lots are close to the beach but for a fee. Pay close attention to the parking price, it varies between 5 and 10 euros, they change the price as they want, maybe depending on the value of the car or how strong the sun is, I couldn't understand. For this reason, most park on the side of the road, even if they put their cars in danger. As you descend from Demolionata village, take a break to admire the stunning views, then drive carefully to Agia Eleni beach. <laughs> This small but beautiful beach is located on the Poliki Peninsula of Kefalonia. The beach is not organized so make sure you bring everything you need, parking is close to the beach. The Melisani Cave is the most visited place by tourists in Kefalonia. The roof of one of the halls collapsed centuries ago, letting sunlight into the cave. When the sun is directly overhead at lunchtime, the sunlight hits the turquoise blue waters and creates a magical illusion in Melisani Cave.
Platas Geolos Beach is located near Argostoli, the capital of the island of Kefalonia, and is known for its natural beauty. Parking is close to the beach and is free. The beach was awarded the blue flag for cleanliness and good organization, you will find sunbeds, umbrellas, showers and a snack bar. Platas Geolos is located next to another famous beach, namely Macris Geolos. <laughs> Macris Geolos is a nice tourist resort that is located around a beautiful bay. Together with neighboring Platas Geolos, Macris Geolos boasts stunning scenery, golden sand and lush vegetation with tall pine trees. Argostoli is the capital of the island of Kefalonia and has a population of 14,000. A 900-meter-long stone bridge built by the Swiss engineer Charles Philip de Bosset, called the Drapano Bridge, is at the entrance to the capital. In the center is a beautiful monument known as the Obelisk, visible from any point, it was built in honor of the British period considered very beneficial for the island. In Argostoli the Orthodox churches are very well represented if we consider the imposing Panagia located opposite the entrance to the Drapano Bridge. Argostoli can be proud of a beautiful cliff, with a very attractive cobbled promenade along the shore, built of white and black stones laid in a pattern that imitates the undulating movements of the water and is bordered by palm trees. Thank you for watching. And if you like it, we are waiting for a like, and if you want to become our partners in future trips, just subscribe to our YouTube channel.